What's going on guys, Victor here, and I'm out fishing with my good buddy, Adam back there. What's up boys? From Moving Weight Fishing. So you guys might recognize him from the commercial mackerel video. We did a dive video together recently. And Adam, what? how many subs you at now? 7,400 I believe. So let's try to get that number closer to like 8,000. If right. you guys want to check out Adam's channel, I'm going to have it linked below. He actually invited me out with CJ right back there. What's going on, guys? CJ invited me on the boat too. So big thank you to CJ and Adam for having me. So we're out here and we're doing a little drift fishing today. Now, normally you guys see me go out of Hillsborough Inlet or Boca Inlet, but today we are out of Jupiter Inlet, way, way, way over there. And what you doing right now? Letting out a nice sardine and hopefully catches a big blackfin or a dolphin. So check this out. Nothing makes me more excited than this right here. A live well full of big, juicy sardines. Anyone who knows anything about offshore fishing knows that sardines are like the Rolls Royce of baits. They, they just get tight. They send out vibrations like no other fish love them. If there's one bait that a fish will not deny, it's usually a big fat sardine. So that's what we're doing. Adam's got the fall rod out. CJ in the back and then we're gonna have a deep line right there. So hopefully next clip you guys will see us tight. Hooked up boys. What do you got? I think it's a dolphin. Looks like CJ lost one just right before this and then it jumped so we're out deep. Should be a dolphin. Stand on top? Yeah. It's a coke. <laughs> Not a bad way to start the morning is it? My donuts. <laughs> Not the donuts. <laughs> All right, guys. First fish in the boat. We got our dolphin in the cooler. And I'll show you what we got going on in one sec. Oh yeah. yeah. Really weird. It's not weird. fighting much, is it? No, but look at it. Tuna esque, dude. Yeah. Tuna-esque. It is tuna -esque. You guys are going to learn all sorts of vocabulary from today's right. video. Scoosh. Sco scoosh. Come on, Victor. Scoosh. What have I you? Suspect. Sus. Dude. That's a tuner. That is a tuner. Oh, he just woke up now, didn't he? He was swimming at you for a little bit. That is the most tuna-esque fish of my lifetime. Nice tuna. Heck yeah. Boys, nice one, Jay. Got the hook right there. 15 pounder, 12 pounder. Probably 12. Big old eyeballs. Look at how pretty that is. Is that a real one? I guess so. Make sure you got a hook in it. I'm I watching that rod. Oh, sail? Yeah. Unfortunately. Why you sound so sad? <laughs> yeah, watch the other ones get some doubles in here. Now he's charging or did he spit it? I don't know. I hope he spit it. I think it. he spit it. I think he spit it too. Look at the fly. Well, front rod, front rod. It ain't that one. <laughs> nah, that's oh, a different this fish. Deep. This one's going real deep. So Adam just, what, well, you pulled hook on the sail? Yeah, he just jumped off. Yeah. You saw all those flyers that came up? Yeah, right? That's, right? that's why it. I said watch that front rod. Look at, look at that flyer. Holy smokes. Oh. That flying fish just got like 40 <laughs> feet of air. Your fish going deep, huh? Yeah. What do you got, Vic? I hope it's a tuna. It's not really coming up like a bonito yet. Yeah, we just got the bite in 200. <laughs> Big tail beats tuna. Yeah. Tuna ass. All our bites have been 190, 200. Yeah. Yeah. Nice tuna. Oh, yeah. That's a stud. Heck yeah. He's just fat. Yeah. It's just not long. 
two snug black fins in the boat now. So last fish that Brooke and I caught and ate was an AJ and we bled it. And the difference was honestly way better than a non-blood non fish. So we're gonna go ahead and bleed this tuna too. And to do that, for tuna, right here by the peck fin. And they will just bleed themselves out. So what you got, Malusi? Hopefully a 20 pound black fin. Thought it was a bonita at first because it was just on top dead weight and then he went down and started doing his little pinwheel deal, so. That's what tuna will do. That's how we know the difference between Dude, a tuna. See right there? Uh -huh. Tail beats, I mean. When sitting down there, boom, boom. Those big tail beats, that rod doing that, that's usually a black fin. Bonita's more like this. Really quick. Yep. And they're moving around more. See how he's straight, staying straight down? Because what that tuna is doing down there is he's doing pinwheels, what they call it. He's doing circles. His body's sideways and he's just going like this. Whereas Benitas, they'll shoot up, down, all around and just go crazy. And 15 pounder. Why are they all fighting so hard? That's a nice one. Ooh. Quick on me. Here you go. Nope. Deeper than he looks. This turn, this turn, this turn. There we go. It's a nice, nice. one. It's a 15 pounder. Yeah. Good fish. Uh, They've all been right around the same size. Yeah. Tail rope, Jay. On blast. What are you doing? Why is your spool empty? All right, so I'm sitting on the leaning post right here, and when we're riding, my freaking butt hit this lever and put it in free spool, and we have no line on the reel. So, so you got like 400 yards of line. Shout out to reel. me. <laughs> we're gonna have to sit here for 10 minutes. We're running in. We finished up our drift. Got three pretty decent sized tunas, one dolphin. But it started to get pretty sloppy out here and we're in a 19 foot Key West. We're gonna head in, try to do a little mutton fishing and hopefully get on them. Hopefully the sharks aren't that bad because these guys, CJ and Adam, say that the sharks have been really bad at eating all of their snapper. You'll see, you'll see. We'll find out. Adam's got a nice mutton on. Strawberry or rock hine. Maybe you guys can comment below, but I could never tell. You know difference. what? That might be a rock hine. There's like it's not strawberry. There's no such thing as a real strawberry grouper. That's like a nickname. Really cool looking grouper though. There we go. You on? Yeah. It's a nicer fish. Yeah. Maybe just a keeper. It's shooting up the surface though. I need to ask. Huh? I need to ask. You might uh, just make it. We'll see. Not as big as Adam's, but that, that might make 18. Maybe. Here. Nah. Nah. He's 17 and a half. He's just short. Pretty one now. We'll get back down there and try to get a keeper. 
So here's what we got going on. 6-0 Mustad Ultra Point, cigar minnow, hooked right here in the tail so he swims away from us in the current. 50 pound leader. Whenever we mountain fish, we're always in the sand because if you're on the top of the reef, you are just more than likely going to snag the reef or just run into a bunch of other problems. So the mountains kind of cruise on the outside edges of the reef in the sand. And that's pretty universal no matter where you are. Mines are kind of like the ghosts of the reef. They're always on the outside just patrolling everything. My reel's in free spool. We got a Koban. Matter, it's fine. It's Get him, Adam. Hell yeah. Jeez. Good job. I go, Jay, put a bait down. Smokes a cove. Started coming up and go, that's Dude, a you, you called it like as soon as it ate, too. Yeah, you started coming go. up and I saw the head shake. That's yep. a cobia. You do. Yep. A grouper. Oh, it's mutton. A mutton. Yeah, that's funny. He's all scaled. Uh, you got him out Crazy. of the Jewfish's mouth. So we weren't recording that one, but check this out. Killed See how too. scaled and crazy this thing is? A, a Goliath grouper Jewfish ate this thing. Swallowed it whole. And I was fighting the Jewfish, and then it eventually let go. That, bro, not and that was in off. its mouth. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Now we're gonna be doing something really cool tonight. We're doing a tuna stir fry on the walk, which I've never done before with tuna. You know, we're always doing sushi or seared, so I wanna kinda spice it up and do a little bit of a different recipe. And the reason you guys didn't see me do the filet portion in today's video is because, check out these. This is a tuna collar. This is an amberjack collar, amberjack collar, another tuna collar. This is the tuna collar from, from the black fins that we caught. So these are gonna be featured on my second channel. That is my cooking channel that I just started. I'm gonna have it linked below. Right now it's just my name, Victor Hlubin. There's no actual channel name besides that. But I'd really appreciate it if you guys checked it out. If you like it, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and I hope you guys come along on the adventure. I'm gonna be cooking the collars on there, which I think is really neat, and I don't see too many people doing it on YouTube. So, what we're doing today is we're gonna start out and make a little cornstarch batter. I have an egg, one egg beaten in here. Now we're gonna add cornstarch. This is a cup of water, but I'm just gonna start out with half a cup. So we got our real simple cornstarch batter and we're just gonna season it with some salt, some pepper. Look at these beautiful chunks of that black fin tuna. I'll tell you what, my mouth is watering. It's just like, it looks like cherry red candy. It's like candy to a fisherman, you know? So we're just gonna dump these all in here. Now we're just gonna go ahead and just coat our fish. So we got our little fry pan around 350 degrees with some peanut oil. Now I'm just gonna start to drop my tuna chunks in. All right guys, these uh, tunas got to be a little crazy. I went a little overboard on the cornstarch, not gonna lie. I didn't let my cornstarch and water settle and I thought it was a lot thinner than it was. <laughs> so we got a lot of cornstarch on our tuna, which is fine though, it's still gonna taste good. Lesson learned. And this is what they look like. And this is what I mean. I went a little heavy on the uh, cornstarch, but I'll tell you what. Taste-wise, it's good. Okay, so since our tuna is off the grill, I'm just gonna whip up a little sauce. I have some cornstarch mixed with water. I'm gonna add some pineapple nectar, a little rice vinegar for some acidity, some soy for some salinity. And of course, the sweet chili sauce. This stuff is delicious. Okay, I'm also gonna add a little bit, this is like a quarter of a red chili pepper, a fresh red chili pepper. As well as some scallions from Brooks Garden. Homemade scallions are the best scallions. 
homemade. Give it a little whip. Okay, so here is the sauce we made earlier. We're gonna put it into our wok. We're gonna bring it up to a little boil and simmer. Thicken it up, but we're gonna put our fish, our tuna chunks, right back into it. Okay, now we're gonna put our fish directly into our sauce. It's gonna be deliciously crunchy, sweet, tangy. It's gonna be real good. Some jasmine rice, our tuna with that sweet chili sauce. Amberjack? Yeah. Wait. Okay, there Thanks. you go. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know we did not do a review at the end like usual, but that's because we did a review on my second cooking channel, which is once again gonna be linked below on the tuna collars and stuff. Um, and I'm gonna be doing a ton of giveaways to try to drive traffic there. Starting with the Dexter giveaway, I'm not sure what I'm giving away yet, but I want to hear your guys' input on what you want to see given away. So Dexter makes all sorts of stuff. They don't just make filet knives, they also make sashimi, kitchen knives, a bunch of barbecue utensils, fish turners. What do you guys want to see? You guys want to see some sashimi knives given away, filet knives, or barbecue stuff? Go ahead and comment below, and then in the next video I will kind of announce what we're going to be doing and how it's going to be set up. Um, if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, at Landshark Outdoors, I'm going to be giving away some Mustad and Tough Line giveaways on there. I did a really big hook package giveaway recently, a couple months ago, and you guys loved it, like ate it up. I gave away like $1,000 worth of hooks and vertical jigs and tackle box. And now that I'm partnered up with Tough Line, I'm going to be doing the same with braids. So you guys do not want to sleep on that at Lance Shark Outdoors on Instagram. Tons of giveaways coming. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, I will catch you guys in that next one.